Hi, everyone, and welcome. I'm Sheriff Scott Rose from Minnesota, and I'm your host for today's new episode of the Officer Down Memorial Podcast. He's walking eastbound, walking eastbound. In each episode of the Officer Down Memorial Podcast, we'll share the details and the stories of how these men and women heroically lost their lives in the line of duty. Our mission is to help ensure their service and sacrifice is never forgotten. Thanks for spending some time with me today to remember and honor these fallen heroes. Lyle, Minnesota. A small community in southern Minnesota that borders Iowa on its south city limits. Its population has remained between 500 and 600 people for over 100 years. It was named after Robert Lyle, a local farmer, a territorial, and a state legislator. Standing 80 feet tall and 180 feet long, the new Lincoln Memorial was dedicated on this year in Washington, D.C., The construction took eight years to complete and honors arguably one of the greatest presidents of our history, Abraham Lincoln, memorializing his belief in the freedom and dignity of all people. Inspired by a boy who came to his confectionery shop and couldn't decide between ice cream and a chocolate bar, Christian Kent Nelson introduced his new frozen treat this year. He called it Eskimo pie. And now meet the star of our show. Symbol of a treat that quality made famous. America's most famous ice cream treat. Eskimo pie. Creamy, delicious ice cream made even more exciting with smooth, rich chocolate coating. And wearing... And by the way, he wasn't an Eskimo. He was from Iowa. Having started his career as a left-handed pitcher for the Boston Red Sox, George Herman Ruth Jr., or better known as Babe Ruth, became a baseball phenomenon in the United States and signed a three-year contract this year with the New York Yankees for $52,000 a year. That ball blazed like a bullet when he connected. This is the sight the fans came to see. Ruth circling the sacks after a circuit clout. You're watching Diamond History. This was Babe Ruth, Mr. Baseball. The year was 1922. Christian Johnson, referred to as Chris by everyone in town, was born on December 19th, 1856 in Sundal, Norway. At the age of 22, he came to America, settling with his parents in Mona, Iowa just a couple miles south of Lyle, across the Minnesota-Iowa border. He married Carrie Larson, and in 1822, he settled in St. Angsger, Iowa. After 18 years of service for the Illinois Central Railroad Company, he purchased a farm four miles west of Lyle, which he operated for a, a short time, and then became a rural mail carrier, where he served for nine years. He was a member of Lyle Lutheran Church, Masonic Lodge, and the MWA. In 1921, he was appointed Lyle City Marshal. The 1920s was the first decade to have a nickname, the Roaring Twenties. Prohibition was a period in our country's history ushered in by the 18th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution which banned the manufacturing, transportation, and sales of intoxicating liquors with the passage of the Volkstead Act. The 1920s was the decade of prosperity and dissipation. The decade of jazz bands, bootleggers, raccoon coats, bathtub gin flappers, flagpole sitters, speakeasies, and marathon dancers. Prohibition was relatively new, just a couple of years old at this time, and was difficult to enforce, even in southern Minnesota. 
Carl Gustav Springer was one of the locals in Lyle. Carl worked at the Anderson Garage. He was involved with cars. He had also owned the Gem Restaurant in town for a time. Also owned a pool hall in Lyle. Prior to moving to Lyle, Minnesota, he enlisted and served in the Army. The one thing that the newspapers and locals often said Carl struggled with was alcohol. It was October 5th, 1922. Carl had been drinking and drinking a lot. He was at the commercial hotel that night and he eventually was told by city marshal Chris Johnson that it was time to go home. The marshal escorted Springer home without incident and returned back to the hotel. Back at home, Springer became upset about being escorted home. He grabbed his 45 caliber military-issued pistol and he told his wife he was going to go out and kill the marshal. Springer left his house and walked over to O.R. Mickleyards. He also told him that he was going to go out and kill the marshal because the marshal said he was drunk and he took him home. Some suggest Springer had a grudge against Chris. According to the April 8th edition of the Lyle Tribune in 1921, Carl had run against Chris and another local man, George Eastley, for the position of city marshal. Chris received three votes from the board. Eastley received two, and Carl received none. Chris was declared duly elected as the new city marshal with a salary of $75 per month. Carl, now armed, walked back to the commercial hotel to find Chris. Marshal Johnson was standing out in front of the hotel. Springer confronted the marshal and he started firing. Carl fired six rounds at Marshal Johnson. One round hit his watch, one hit his shoulder. The other four rounds brought Marshal Johnson to the ground. Marshal Johnson died in front of the hotel. It was 2 a.m. Carl fled the scene and he went to Gio Wiborny's home. He told him what he had done. He said goodbye and he said he was gonna go kill himself. Maurer County Sheriff Nicholas Nicholson was notified. Sheriff Nicholson was the longest serving sheriff in Moore County and one of the county's most popular officials. Then a group of local citizens gathered. They were going to start the hunt for Springer, who they thought might be hiding somewhere in town. At about 5.30 that morning, Springer's body was located by the search team, lying against Ole Hansen's barn. Carl had killed himself, just as he said he would. Locals had reported earlier that day that Springer had gone to two or three businesses in town and paid up all his bills, but nothing was said to indicate that he was contemplating what he would later do. Christian Johnson was 66 years old. He'd served in the city of Lyle for just about two years, and he left behind his wife, six sons, and two daughters. Carl Springer was 48 years old and left behind a wife and two kids. County Coroner Dr. Henslin and County Attorney Otto Bodler impaneled a jury of six who heard the testimony of several witnesses and their verdict was Johnson was killed by Springer and Springer killed himself with the same gun. That next day, in bold letters on the front page of the Lyle Tribune, on October 6th, it read, Double Tragedy, Thursday AM. Marshal Johnson shot by Carl Springer while on duty. Manhunt organized. Springer found about 5.30 AM. The funerals for both men were held that Saturday at the Lutheran Church by Reverend A. Elmer Moe. Carl Springer's service was held that morning at 11 a.m. Chris Johnson's that afternoon at 2 p.m. The church was full in the morning, with twice as many trying to attend the afternoon service, half of them not being allowed admission into the church. They said Chris's was the largest funeral ever in Lyle history. 
Both services were impressive, and the speaker referred very forcefully to the circumstances that led up to the tragedy, urging citizens to live more Christian lives and let that influence them and others. The Lyle Tribune explained Chris this way. Friends in town said he was a good soldier, for not all brave and courageous fighters are in the trenches or even on the battlefield. There are brave struggles unnoticed by the world. He met his last clear call as a soldier while performing his duties as a humble public official, and there is left for his neighbors, friends, and loved ones a noble example of fidelity to his duty, which will far outlast the passing of his earthly form. It is not all of death to die, nor all life to live. Many things outlast death as we know it, and the life of the deceased we shall always remember him as a dutiful citizen, a good brother, and a true husband. Shall we, who knew him, whose life ended too tragically and so suddenly, strive to be more loyal citizens, better friends, neighbors, and pals, and may uncloud memory of one who was so lately among us, linger on into the days, months, and years, until we too shall answer the last great call, and our earthly time shall be no more. The Austin Herald reported, The man who sold the moonshine that inflamed the mind of Carl Springer so he would kill another and take his own life played his part in that awful tragedy that ruined two homes. This criminal seller of booze is also, in part, a murderer. For a few dollars he made by the sale of the poison, he has filled two graves, widowed two women, and brought deep sorrow among the children of the victims of his sale. The penalty for making and the sale of liquor is not severe enough. There should be no fines imposed, for this is no punishment. It is hoped that the man who made the sale that was responsible for the Lyle tragedy will be caught and that the limit of the law will be visited upon him. There are no records of any fines or arrests related to this incident. Christian Johnson was buried in Pleasant Hill Cemetery in Mona, Iowa. He was the first line of duty death in Moore County, Minnesota, and is recognized every year during police week by the Minnesota Law Enforcement Memorial Association at the State Memorial Service in St. Paul, and by the Law Enforcement Memorial Foundation of Southeast Minnesota at their service in Rochester. Walking eastbound, walking eastbound. Thank you for spending the time to listen, learn about, and honor the memory of this fallen hero. Make sure you take the time to thank your local law enforcement for their service and their sacrifice. And don't forget to thank their families too. They also sacrifice so much for our safety. It's up to us to help ensure the sacrifices made by these fallen heroes and by their families are never forgotten. So please share this podcast with family and friends. Until next time, this is the Officer Down Memorial Podcast. I'm Scott Rose. Thanks for listening. <laughs>